here. I would like to welcome the first speaker today, who will, be, who te who tell, who will tell you how you can make, uh, how you can make uh, your exercise something exciting. I, I was actually in Robbie's uh, place a few times already, and I, I am really looking forward, every time I'm going to his place, I'm looking forward to see Robbie, and not, not because he's a handsome guy or something like that. It's because he gives so much value in terms, in terms of knowledge, of practical advices, what you can actually do every single day. Just like simple things like increasing your water intake, simple things like um, uh, eating the right breakfast, eating the right amounts of protein, carbohydrates and fats, and all those kind of simple advices that actually change immediately how I felt. So, um, Robbie will tell you himself what he's up to. Um, please help me welcome Robbie Adrisco! Can you hear me? Well, this? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. 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 Right, so, as Maggie said, I'm Robbie Adrisco and I'm an exercise nutrition coach. I'm going to have to keep referring to these guys now because they keep me on track. I have a tendency to go off on tangents, so this will keep me on track. What do I do? I make the people of Cork feel that bit healthy, healthier and that bit happier. And how do I do it? On a private one-to-one -one basis, I coach each client through exercise, nutrition and lifestyle, and each one goes hand in hand. You couldn't have exercise without nutrition. You couldn't participate in healthy nutrition without correcting your lifestyle to complement it and exercise either. So I had to cap it on myself without one or the other. Why do I do it? Basically, I used to be an electrician. For 11 years I was working as an electrician. I was always interested in helping and taking care of myself. And um, I hated being an electrician. My son was born and I put a lot of things in perspective for me. And I realized I didn't know, I didn't really, really know how to make a perfect version of this boy. I didn't know how to turn him into a man perfectly. So I thought, I kind of study this stuff because I'm interested in how that it is. I want to know exactly. I think the stuff I'm going to be sharing with you today we should be taught in school. I think it's <coughs> fundamental to our life that we should know exactly how to live and eat to maintain a healthy, strong body and to live a long, happy, healthy life. Teachers. All of these guys are two of my teachers and they're both over the age of 50. So you can be pretty sure these guys know exactly what they're talking about. To look in this shape at that age, I travel the world to to talk to these guys and um, they had some very kind of information they had to share with me and I'd like to share with you. So, a lot of us want to know why do we store fat? I think the best way of um, helping anybody to change their body shape is to first tell them why they are making these changes. So I can tell my client me, I want you to go home and eat a load of vegetables. Do you know? Why? Why would I do it if I don't know why exactly there is a point in doing this? Some people would just do it blindly. But for you to maintain the changes, it needs to be, there needs to be a reason behind it. And then you'll do it for the rest of your life and you'll know exactly why you're doing it. So this is going to keep me on par. I'm going to talk about the two reasons we store fat. There are many reasons, but we're going to talk about two of them. I'm going to give you a perspective shift that helps a lot of people to stay on par with their diet. And I'm going to give you one easy solution to get this fat moving off your body. We store fat because there's three reasons. Stress, toxins, and malnutrition. These are all causes of fat being stored in our body. Let's talk about malnutrition. Malnutrition is a condition that results from eating a diet in which certain nutrients are lacking in excess or in the wrong proportion. Basically, you're not eating enough, you're eating too much of one food, or you're not eating the right ratio. Too much of one, not enough of the other. Malnutrition, by the way, comes in many forms. Just don't consider malnutrition as one of these third world country problems. Just because someone is very thin or very fat, they can both be, both as malnourished. It's just the symptomatic effects are different to the individual. Right, I should probably read every one of these. Symptoms of malnutrition. Dark circles or bags in the belly, poor night vision, bleeding gums, hair loss. nutrition of the power? Are you getting adequate amounts of the right carbohydrates, proteins, vitamins and minerals? Because a lot of people, like, I, I think everyone in the room might have one of these, or ring a bell, or know somebody who has had one of these symptoms, or has one of these symptoms, and can consider themselves isolated with these symptoms. These are, I talk to people every day into my office, and these are so common, and these are so quickly fixed by just correcting diet. 
really. I had a client two weeks ago who cancelled his dental appointment because he, his teeth stopped bleeding. After three years of bleeding, every time he brushed teeth, he stopped bleeding. And he asked me, how is that? I said, you're just unnourishing the body. Your body is functioning properly. And there's some scary facts that you jump out. 10,000 people die each year from cardiovascular disease. Cardiovascular disease is caused by nutrition, as well as other factors, but a nutritional aspect is a big player. In Ireland, at the present time, 38% of adults have, are overweight and 80% are obese. Completely unnecessary. All out of the table. The right information will be readily available and it will be avoided. Right. Let me explain things, and I'm going to try and put these into the simplest forms as I possibly can. Why do we store fat? No. We are made up of trillions of cells. All of us. If you look at the like a little microscope and zoom right into any part of our body, you can see tiny, tiny, tiny cells. And some of those cells are fat cells, and their purpose is to store fat. Has anyone ever wondered why women store fat more than men store fat? No? It's to do... Yeah, yes? It Have you? Of course, yes. Yeah. And women might look, how is it easy that he loses weight so fast and I can't seem to shift it? And the more I diet, the easier the fat comes on. But there's a reason, there's a science behind it. I'm going to put it as simple as I can. You have these lipogenic enzymes, and in this case is an elf carrying a box, because that's the only thing I could find to fit the part. And these are fat storing enzymes, and you have lipolytic, which are fat burning enzymes. So these guys, they bring fat to the cell to make the fat cell expand. These guys, or when you use up your fat, take it from the fat cell. Now women have three times more fat cells than men, so you're already at a deficit, really. You're already going to struggle with that. So what happens when we diet? How many people, how many people have tried a diet? Yeah, everyone's tried one, and come off it, and then pretty quickly put the weight back on. Often, more so, more weight comes back on. Why could that happen? When you go on a diet, your body realizes it doesn't have that regular calorie intake that it used to have. It doesn't have that regular supply of minerals and vitamins that it used to have. So it creates more fat storing enzymes. So that when you're in a situation again of what it perceives as famine or starvation, it goes, next time food comes in, I'm going to hold on to it because I don't know when I'm going to be starved again. You also lose your lipolytic enzymes, meaning that the guys who get rid of the fat and burn it, they go away because they're like, no, we've got to hold on to this stuff. We don't know when it's going to be you know, scarce again. So then you put on more fat, and what do you do then? You go on another diet. You're like, oh, I've got to lose all this weight really fast and get it off. I'm going to starve myself and I eat some food, or I'm going to really, really fast exercise routine and eat low calorie diet, or this time I'm going to try something different. I'll try the Atkins. And we create more. And this is a cycle that goes on and on and on. And then how many people have you heard, I've tried everything and nothing seems to work? But, but that's exactly the problem. You've tried everything. So you've starved yourself way too many times and you've increased your fat storing enzymes. So that's one reason we store fat. Does that make sense? Is that clear? Is yeah. Simple? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Right. The next one is insulin resistance. And this guy, this guy is responsible for a lot. Obesity, diabetes are also a part of this guy here. So it would be good to understand this one. And again, I'm going to turn this complicated slide to, to as simple as I can get it across. We eat food, okay? Most foods contain sugars. Sugar then is converted to glucose. We've all heard of glucose. Glucose? Yeah? Familiar with glucose? Right, so glucose is a form of energy in the body. We need glucose to move our muscles and stuff like that. Without it, we won't be able to move. So let's think of glucose as a battery. Then your pancreas creates insulin. You've heard of insulin? And insulin's purpose is to bring the glucose to the muscle. So food goes in, we create glucose. Pancreas says we've got to bring the energy to the part of the body we need to move. So let's say the truck heads up goes up to the bicep, muscle cell, muscle cell here, the battery is dropped off, then we have the energy to move, muscle can move, perfect. That's in the, the, the right circumstances, providing we move enough to require the glucose. So there's two reasons we can create resistance. One reason would be taking in too much sugar. So the glucose is brought to the muscle cell, and the muscle cell says, well, I don't need it, I got some a while ago, you can go away. Where does it go? To the fat stores. Your body won't go, oh, okay, we're not needed, we get rid of it. It will save it again for later. It wants to preserve, it wants to keep you alive. The body is hardwired to make you last as long as you possibly can. Another reason is if you don't move. If nobody moves, then you don't need energy to move. How many, how, how many people are in this position all day? Driving the car, then they get to work, and they're at the desk, then they get home and they're at the couch. There's zero movement. There is no need for energy. 
So what does it do? It creates resistance. I know the, the insulin resistance is this at, at a constant rate. What will happen then is when the sugar comes into the body, the truck won't even bother heading to the muscle cell. It'll just go straight to fat stores. So you're going to be left tired because the glucose, the sugar, won't be brought to any part of your body, meaning you won't have energy to do anything. Like we talked about a while ago, that lethargy and apathy couldn't be bothered doing anything. It's because the energy isn't going to the right place because you haven't moved. Your muscles have said, no point bringing it here. So food goes in, food goes straight to fat, which for women is normally here, and for men it's normally here. Yeah, am I right? Yes. yes. So, let me give you a quick perspective shift, right? Because this, I find, helps a lot of people to make the food choices. Historically, people secured their food through two methods, hunting, gathering, and agriculture. So, hunting and gathering, that requires a lot of movement. Yeah, you've got to go kill something, that requires movement. That's why men would put on muscle better than women, because men were always the guys to kill something and eat it, or tear up the ground to grow something. Today, most of the food consumed by the world public is supplied by the food industry. We don't have to move for our food anymore. It's just given to us in packets. Well, food is given to us in packets. But we haven't changed. We are pretty much the exact same as these guys. The only thing that's changed is our environment. We, from a biological perspective, are still hunter-gatherers. We are still cavemen. We, we have the same nutritional requirements. Our organs are the exact same. Our makeup is the exact same. What do hunter-gatherers survive on these? How many people start their day like this? Yeah, no one's going to show their hands. <laughs> well, yeah, again, like, these don't supply the right amount of energy to the body. These, are, in fact, would be a toxic to the body. And I know, but I have them low fat and sugar free, it's the same thing. They wouldn't make a hunter gatherer get up and be able to kill something or mow something. So nobody can expect to have energy from any of these foods, but they can expect to have quite a high toxic load. Would a hunter gatherer survive on these? Just foods, foods that the planet provides. What our body hungers for is what our bodies are designed to run on. When we feel hungry, that hunger sensation, that's your body telling you, I need a certain amount of vitamins, minerals, or something in particular. Anybody get some food cravings? For example, someone who would crave cheese. Jeez, I'd love some cheese. That's your body telling you, you want some healthy gut flora. Your, your body will tell you. Your body gives you these signals and tells you what it is that it wants. And the more you listen to yourself, the better you'll do but it often it, it's hard for some people, person to switch on to their enteric system, the gut, which will tell you exactly what it means because you have a TV in front of you telling you, you don't want that, you want this, you want, you want low fat and you'll be grand, everything, you'll have loads of energy, but that's not the case. The, the These foods are provided naturally by the planet, so they're here going to help you easily make your food choices. These foods provide all the nutrients we need to run optimally. So when it comes to choosing foods and food labeling, you'll have a lot of people that go to the shop and they read the food labels, mm, calories and fats and all that kind of stuff. What I can tell you, the easiest solution is to choose foods that don't have labels. The ingredients list to an apple is an apple. The ingredients to fish is the fish. Anything where there's been a middleman in come between you and your food, he's done something to it that has made it less favorable to you. The planet provides the food for us. We, we've been surviving on it for a long time, and then um, we're going to continue to survive on it the more we switch back to the foods that were originally made to keep us going. Now, eat your only whole foods, like I just said. This is how you're going to get the fat going out of your system. Avoid going hungry. Don't starve yourself. Don't go on any more diets. Forget diets. Because, like I said, you're going to make more fat storing enzymes, you're going to store more fat. Forget it. Just don't try the new fat. Don't try and get a quick fix. They don't work. The new tablet won't work. Stop eating when you're 80% full. If you're eating a, a diet of whole foods predominantly, it's very hard to overeat. You will get a, low, a signal loud and clear from your body going, I have the right nutritional content here. Sorry, Robert, just, just to stop you there. Uh, Go for it. Uh, I like going hungry. Uh, there's also uh, another reason why uh, it, it should be getting the avoided yeah. uh, by the psychologist. And, uh, when? They make poor decisions. When they're hungry, yes. they're yeah. eating something incredibly bad, which is absolutely brilliant exactly. at that time. You're right. So, so it should never yeah, there's the psychology behind it. Yeah, exactly. And often, when we go hungry, what we're looking for, like we talked about a while ago, is the glucose. We're looking for that real quick burst of energy. So we go for those sugary options, yeah. a quick fix that comes out of a packet. Oh, that's grand. But again, insulin resistance. And there's another cycle there. You would end up chasing the buzz, but that's for another talk. And no more diet ever, like I said, don't starve yourself, forget about it. 
as in scripture, to consistency. <coughs> the, the golden rule of consistency, it really is, don't be distracted by something new. Don't think that she knows something I do. Because there's someone in great shape on a poster holding something, doesn't mean it's necessarily going to be work for you. Remember, you're a hunter-gatherer, you're a caveman, you're a cave woman. The, the planet provides all the food you need. Once you stick to whole foods diet, you'll be grand. That'll be meat, fish, whatever ones you like, vegetables, whatever ones you like, nuts, seeds, whatever ones you like. These will give the body correct nutrition, which will create a healthy environment for your body to start detoxing, for that shifting food. And the last one is the 80-20 rule. It's not all bad news. It doesn't mean like your food is going to be boring anymore. Once your diet is 80%, of all these whole food diet, your 20% is, um, can be anything you want. You can have that marathon. I won't have a negative effect, provided the instant one. Um, now you know, and a lot of people know this information. It's the application of it that makes the difference. So knowing it's not enough, you must apply it. Willing it's not enough, we must do. Go, go do it, and I'm sure you'll enjoy it. I guarantee you, let's say six months from now, you will have lost a whole heap of body fat that will not come back and you'll create more fat burning enzymes and I just got the cue to shut up so that's me I'm sorry.